Hey again, Boo here, back for another review, video, whatever. Um, this one is by a house that I'm a little disappointed in. A um, couple of the frags that I was really excited to try um, didn't thrill me. One was, I think it's Amber 114. The house is uh, Histoise de Parfum. And the Amber 114 smelled very similar. It was kind of like a cross between Ombre Russe and Ombre, Ombre Sultan or Amber Sultan. Ombre Sultan. And uh, I love Ombre Russe. Ombre Sultan, Sultan is a little too pencil shaving for me. Um, and this is another one. Uh, I got a sample pack with five different samples in it. Uh, uh, not the Ombre 114. That one was in a different uh, bag. But I was real excited about this one, and this one is a uh, 1969. And uh, I was, it sounded fabulous, sounded right up my alley. And, you know, out of the bottle, it's not so bad, but when I wore it around a couple of days, um, ended up being very floral to me. And from what I understand, that I may be wrong, but I thought the whole premise of the 1969 perfume was to celebrate the emancipation of women, their right to vote, being coming an equal member of society, you know, and when I smell this, I, you know, I, I just don't get Rosie the Riveter. I get uh, Betty Crocker, you know, at, and um, not my thing. I'll tell you what's in it. And I'm going to go from my least favorite to my favorites, because there is a couple in here that I do like. Um, 1969 was launched in 01. Um, top note is peach, middle notes are rose, white flowers, cardamom, and clove. Base notes are musk, patchouli, Mexican chocolate, and coffee. And it just sounded, you know, other than the rose and white flowers, it really did sound like it was right up my alley, but it was not. Uh, the number one thing people say it smells similar to is Comme des Garçons 2 by Comme des Gar Garçons. I can tell you. So, moving on. I don't want to take too long with each one because i got five to go through and you know how I am about babbling. And this next one I really didn't like either. And this is Tuberose 3 Animal. Um, I don't even know why I chose, chose this one. Because the word tu tuberose and animal is in there, and it, I don't like tuberose. And I usually, animal, I, I, I'm assuming is musky, civety kind of a thing. I don't know. I haven't looked yet. And I don't like that either. Well, I like musk, but not civet. Um, so I'm not sure why I put this one in the bag, but whatever. I know I say whatever way too much, but that's the way I feel. Apathetic. Um... Let's see, tuberose resting on floral woody accords, resting on a honey base of tobacco and immortal. Top notes encompass bergamot, mandarin, neroli, and kumquat. A heart adds jasmine, tuberose, dried grass, and plum, while a base finishes with, with hay, tobacco, immortal, woody notes, and an irresistible tuberose. <laughs> yeah. Um. Tuberose and gardenias, not my thing. I'm just not into them. Um, if they're done really lightly in the background, that's fine. But they're just a little too whorish for me, a little too vulgar um, for the most part. Um, and But that's on me. On anybody else, they smell fabulous. I have smelled fragrances with tuberose in them and gardenia that smell incredible on somebody else. But on me... It makes me smell like I should be walking the streets. That's all I'm saying. And people say that it smells similar to... <laughs> okay. Um, let's try that one again. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, third time's a charm. Fwills <laughs> Day Tobacco by Miller Harris. Fwills. <laughs> Please, please. I have no idea. It is spelled. I'll tell you how it's spelled. F U F E U I L L E S. Day Tobacco by Miller Harris. Don't know. But not my favorite. 
moving on. The next one, um, I am a little less loath to, um, but not much. And this one is Moulin Rouge, 1889. Don't know if you can see that. Not that it really matters, it's just a sample. Um, and this one um, is very antique smelling to me. Um, it reminds me when I used to sing in a band and I'd sing in some really old nightclubs sometimes when I was in Seattle. They have some old nightclubs in Pioneer Square and around various parts of Seattle and the dressing rooms. I don't know what it was, if it was a combination of old potpourri in there, uh, maybe a little lingering smoke. Um, Still just not my favorite, not my cup of tea. So this one, 1889 Moulin Rouge. Oh, they put so much superfluous information in here. It's like a story problem in algebra, trying to find the notes. Got to wheedle through all the extra stuff. Oh, there it is. Okay, spicy cinnamon. Warmly mixes with sugar and melts into absinthe, while Rose of Damascus releases her sensuality, playfully seducing each spectator with her allure. The audience and dancers each play different roles, but the music ties them together for a night of revelry and excitement. The enchantment never stops. Time stands still in the Moulin Rouge. Wow. They really get into some of these descriptions, don't they? I always feel like these are little mini harlequin romances or something. Um, just give me the damn notes, you know. I don't want to hear all this other stuff because that's just somebody's opinion trying to make it all frilly and attractive. And to me, the juice speaks for itself. Sometimes the bottle, but mostly the juice. And this doesn't speak to me at all. I Cinnamon? I'm shocked. I smell nothing like that. It, it might be a little whiny, uh, like wine, not wine. I don't know. I don't know. I don't like it. Anyway, and people say, ah, no wonder. Number one thing people say it smells similar to is Agent Lagent by Agent Provocateur, and I can't stand that line. I have yet to smell anything that I care for from that line. It's way too old and synthetic smelling and powdery for me. But I need to revisit it because that was a long time ago, and I've changed. So anyway, 1889 Moulin Rouge, it's kind of a stinker. These last two I do like, um, and the very last one I might just go ahead and get. And this is uh, 1804. I've been dying to try some of the 1700s too. It sounded like there was some ones I was interested in the 1700s, but I don't know. I, you know, with all these samples and so many of them just not appealing to me at all. I'm a little, you know, dubious about ordering another sample pack, but we'll see. Um, this one, 1804. Uh, top notes are pineapple, peach, and gardenia. Wow. Um, I'm shocked. I, tuberose I'm warming up to, gardenias I'm really not. So it must be really in the background because if I'd have really detected it, I don't think. I've got it on my hand. I just don't smell any gardenia. Uh, middle notes are jasmine, rose, lily of the valley, cloves, and nutmeg. Base notes are sandalwood, patchouli, benzoin, vanilla, and musk. It smells a little smoky to me. Oh, I smell the benzoin, definitely, and the patch, and the sandalwood. It becomes kind of a... I never smelled the cloves or the nutmeg, though, I'll be real honest. And still don't. Um, it, it gets a little masculine in the dry down than it is in the top notes, but it's really a nice fragrance. Whether I'm going to spend the money or not to buy it, I don't know. I doubt it. There's too many other things on my wish list. So that's 1804. And these are all Histoire de Parfum. Histoires. Histoires de Parfum. This last one I do like. I almost bought a bottle and then I held myself back. It's kind of a more of a cool weather frag. And where I'm at right now, it hasn't gotten under the eight, uh, the 90s in a long time. So um, I'm kind of sticking with more of my hot weather fragrances. Um, 
because I do have some that are projection beasts in the hot weather and so I wait for more nighttime for those but anyway this last one is 1826 and uh, I really do like this one um, out of all of them I like it very much it's a uh, from top to dry down it's actually what I was hoping um, some of the other ones would smell like Ooh, it sprayed me a little bit um, yeah it's definitely kind of got a spicy ambery uh, appeal to it which appeals to me um, very much so and 1826 that is this one right yeah uh, launched in 01 all of these were it sounded like um, top notes are bergamot and tangerine middle notes are white flowers violet ginger and cinnamon base notes are patchouli incense vanilla amber woody notes and musk and people say this one smells similar to nothing. Did I tell you about the last one? Did anybody say it smelled similar to 1804? Yes. The top one, well, there was only two and not too many votes for each. So Malaba by Pentaglian and Fairy Tales by Lulu Guinness. So anyway, this one is kind of a spicy amber to me. I do really enjoy this one. I Like I said, I did almost get it but it is a little more cool summer nights uh fall winter kind of a frag so it can wait so uh and that's it for uh all of those samples i'm pretty proud of myself knocking those out so quick um tom barber on his last video it did a kind of a tribute to donna shorts one talking about how fragrances will transport you back i I've, I've agreed with that all along um back in time sometimes back in space I mean um, and you know bring up memories sometimes not happy memories um, and sometimes good ones I'd sure like to hear you guys' opinions on that um, being a nurse I do know that um, your sense of smell is the one that your brain likes the most it is the one that will conjure up visions uh, visualizations and memories more than any other sense um, but what else does it do for you I I'd really like to know because me a couple of them have brought me to tears for no reason a couple of them make me feel powerful some make me feel fragile and I would just like to know what you know a couple of your favorite fragrances or least favorite fragrances um, do for you and what are they anyway if you want to put it in the comments box below I'd appreciate it if not Moving on. All right. Have a great day, everybody. Peace.